Hello, hello, YouTube University students, and welcome back to Opa's Garage. And today, we will be working on my 2003 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. Now, this is my daily transportation back and forth to work because it's got the 4-liter inline 6 gas engine, and gas is a whole lot cheaper than diesel right now, so this is what I drive. At any rate, I'm in northern Indiana, and it's winter time, and uh, around here, if we get some snow and it's it's not a major amount, they uh, they don't bother plowing the roads. They usually salt the the main roads or, and salt some intersections, but that's about it. So a few weeks ago, we had a couple inches of snow one morning, and uh, as I headed off to work, I locked her in four-wheel drive, and off I went. A couple miles before I got to work, I started hearing this growling noise. It sounded like a bearing going bad, and uh, I made it to work. And, Sun came out and the snow melted away. I disengaged four-wheel drive and didn't think too much of it. Well, here we are a few weeks later in the past uh, couple days driving back and forth to work. I've noticed that uh, I'm getting that same growling noise even though I'm in two-wheel drive. And it seems to be getting worse. And a lot of the uh, people that make these uh, videos, they, they tell you what the problem is or they tell you what the symptoms are, but you don't ever get to hear them or experience them yourself. And so when I make my videos, if I'm experiencing an issue or experiencing a noise, um, I try to videotape that so that when you watch this video, you can hear the noise that I hear or you can experience the problem that I'm experiencing. Um, and that way you can determine, well, yeah, mine's... My vehicle is doing the same thing or it's making the same noise or whatnot and uh, that way you can decide if if it's worth watching the rest of the video because this might not be the problem that you're having but uh, at any rate let's go ahead and take her for a drive and we'll see if we can get the the Jeep to make the noise that I've been hearing all right I went ahead and put her in four-wheel drive so that it's uh, easier to hear the noise and Pay no attention to that ticking noise. It's this thing's got 291,000 miles on it, so uh, that ticking noise has been making that noise for a long time. But. That noise. say that's that's probably a wheel bearing I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stop I'm gonna go ahead and disengage four-wheel drive throw it in reverse and we're on a two-lane highway but it's a Sunday so nobody's coming take her out of four-wheel drive Pay no attention to the brake light. That's that go, comes on, and goes off, random. Notice our our noise is gone. We'll go ahead and you can hear it a little bit. But anyway, I'll go ahead and put her back in four wheel drive. And slow down a little bit in case it blows apart. Give it a chance to engage. Oh. Hopefully that's coming through on the uh, on the camera. Anyway, that's the noise that I'm talking about. Well, it was making that noise when it was in four-wheel drive the other day. Like I said, when I got to work, I took it out of four-wheel drive. Sun came out, melted the snow, and uh, it stopped making the noise. But now when it's in two-wheel drive, after you drive for about, oh, 10, 15 miles, it starts making that growling noise again. Well, see, you can hear it. Even though I'm not in four-wheel drive anymore, it's still making the noise a little bit. So let's get back to the shop and I'll uh, tell you what I think we got as far as the problem and then we'll start tearing into it. Okay, we got back to the shop and we got the front end jacked up on the Jeep. 
I'll come over here and show you that uh, the Jeep is in park and the transfer case is in the two wheel drive position. And we'll get down here. Oh! I believe this right here is the culprit of my noise. And the reason that I think that is, when I spin the front wheel, you can see that the front drive shaft spins. The reason for that is the front axle on these Jeeps is live, which means that even when you're in two wheel drive, as you're driving down the road, the wheels are spinning, front drive shaft is spinning. Now, when you engage the four wheel drive, it locks the transfer case into position so that it provides power to the front drive shaft and then the front drive shaft can spin the front wheels. But even when you're in two wheel drive, that, uh, that shaft is spinning. And there is a basically a CV joint inside there. The front end on this one happens to have a standard U joint. Sometimes they have a CV style joint like that on the front and the back of the front drive shaft. But uh, to pull this out, like I said, the front one's uh, standard U joint with the strap style uh, retainers. So you've got four bolts to take out up there. And then this, this back one with the CV joint has six bolts. They're 15 16 or 15 16 They're 5 16 or 8 millimeter. Um, either one works. So let's get this uh, drive shaft out of the Jeep and let's get her tore apart and see if I'm right. Okie dokie, we got the drive shaft out. Um, I didn't bother videotaping that. I figure that just about anybody that's going to be watching this video knows how to take a drive shaft out. And even if you've never done it, I'm pretty sure if you got underneath there and started looking, you'd be able to figure it out. But uh, the U-joint, front U-joint's in good shape. I got the, the old trick that everybody knows, put tape around it to hold the caps on. Um, the one thing that I did notice is that, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a nice big rip in that boot which uh, probably allowed all kinds of dirt and debris and um, road grime to get up in there and it's probably what destroyed this uh, uh, CV shaft. Now these are pretty simple to change. Um, take you a hammer and a chisel. Don't worry, your new one's going to come with all this stuff. So. Knock that cap off. Look up in there. Uh, where's the old light? And, yep, all the balls are still there and they're all intact. Um, you got a little snap ring right here. You take that snap ring off and then uh, all you got to do is give it a few whacks and that thing will slide right off. I'll set that, set that there so shine, shed some light on the situation. You can see that it's it's got a fair amount of play to it. Got a little snap ring right there. Take your snap ring pliers and pop that snap ring off. Um, usually on the back side here, there's usually a metal band, kind of like what these are. This one, I think that my metal band, I don't remember why, but I remember doing that, but I don't remember why. I might have got in there, might have been... Uh, making some noise before and I might have got in there and popped that cap off and put some grease up in there But anyway, I'll take those off and then once you get your, uh, your Retainer clip your uh, snap ring all you gotta do is Give her a few whacks and The rubber boots actually want the hold on to it. I think that's the only thing that's stopping it from coming off. Yep. So. And there you go. Okay, so I went ahead and took the chisel and popped that cap off. Um, when you get your new one, it's going to come in, in three pieces. Uh, they made it pretty much idiot proof. Um, this cap has to go on this side. You can see this side has a little bit thicker retention ring than this one. But uh, if you try putting that cap on the wrong side, 
it doesn't go on. If you try putting this cap on the wrong side, the way that's protruding out, it won't go on. Um, so the other thing is, is I want to show you that uh, there's there's the the amount of movement that is in that bearing. But I do not plan on re replacing this CV joint. Um, they're not horribly expensive. Uh, about $120 on, uh, on Amazon right now. About the same price on eBay. Um, if you go down to your local parts store, they're, uh, they're going to charge you a little bit more. I think they're anywhere from $160 to about $200. But the reason why I'm not going to replace this is... I have this parts sheet, which I took the front drive shaft out of it and uh, put it in my blue Jeep that I drive back and forth to work and thus saving me the $100. Also helping me to diagnose that that definitely was my problem. So I'm a pretty big advocate for having parts vehicles. Um, I'm fond of the uh, 99 to 2003 Ford Super Duty trucks. Uh, it's getting kind of dark, so I don't know if you can see. I've, I've got about 12 of them all together including all my parts trucks but uh, the super duties are expensive to work on the 7.3s 6 liters i'm impartial to the 7.3s but they're uh they're getting to be kind of hard to find uh diesels are expensive to work on so those trucks have saved me my parts trucks have saved me a lot of money as far as keeping my other trucks up on up and going and on the road so if you have the opportunity to buy yourself a parts vehicle that matches you know one or two or more vehicles that you have in your fleet um, I highly recommend it and that is going to conclude this video so until next time y'all keep living your best life and get out in the garage and fix something <laughs>